Glad you could join me. That's the KAT1 that I just got off eBay for my K1. Um, part of the issue with that is the firmware was down level. Uh, we'll show you that again quick. We power off. We power up with a button pushed and let go. And it says 106. That's too old. I need 109. So I went over to the Ellicraft site and paid $59.95 for the firmware upgrade. And that is this. So we'll see what they shipped us. So there's the firmware upgrade for the KAT1. And here's the firmware upgrade for the K1. So that's what we're going to do is replace that main processor chip on the front panel of the K1. So let's get to it. We'll pull it off really quick here and see, oops, see if we can get this done really fast. And so there are four screws on the front panel. There's one, there's two. So the front two are countersunk on the top, not countersunk on the bottom. the four screws. The, the front panel on the K1 is pretty cool design. It's very modular. So you pull out these four screws, put them in the bucket so they don't hit the floor. And we slide this out. That's the front panel. There's the front, the, there's the chip we need to replace. We can uh, zoom in the old fashioned way. And you can see that's Rev 106. So that agrees with what we found on the front panel. And I should use something grounded and I should have a little screwdriver out, but I'm going to try the flat blade of a pocket knife and give it a little twist up there and here. You can hear it letting go slightly. There we go. And no pins bent, so that's good. We'll take that and stick it up on a piece of anti-static. So there's the front panel with no controller. Here's our upgrade kit. This is probably a 22 year old rubber band on this too. So I've already read the instructions in case you're wondering what's he doing. So here they are right down here. Basically it says remove the old processor and install the new one and put the board back on. So that's what we're doing. We will look at this processor this way and see how flat these chip legs are. So I think we'll roll it on the table just a bit to get those flat. So they'll drop into the, that's a little better. See if that will drop in better. Now we really need to pay attention to the socket and where pin one is. Um, Wayne did a good job, pin one is labeled Pin one is the dot here. So in, in addition, a lot of sockets will have an indentation in this end. This one has one on both ends. So we'll believe the, the pin one marking and we will put pin one in pin one and see if we can get it to drop in nicely. Looks like the pins are lining up nicely. Yep, that went in pretty well. So there's our firmware upgrade. You can see right down the edge of the chip that everybody went in. No legs are sticking out the side. Looks good. All right, we'll line up that row of pins on the front panel with that row of pins right there. We'll slide this back on carefully. And there it goes. I'll save you the, the drama of the screws. We'll try it out first. We'll try one power up with the button pushed. There's version 109, upgrade complete. So I'll connect the antenna and see what happens. Um, if you'd like to know, you can download this paper. Basically it's release notes. I can tell that uh, Wayne and company are software folks. Here's the upgrade procedure and there's the release notes. 
So you get support for the KAT1 internal tuner, you get tone feedback on the buttons, you get fast tap is easier to use for words per minute up and down. They remove a mystery decimal point that shows up in the menus. The power output display has been adjusted slightly to be more accurate and the low battery indicator threshold has moved, been moved down from 11 to 9 volts. So that's the uh, reason you upgrade the firmware and we just did it pretty quick. So thanks for joining me. Bye.